in the most uh, worst out election of the year, uh, Taiwan has voted uh, for the incumbent government. Uh, the Democratic People's Party has won the third election in a row. And uh, that is not a good news for China, at least. Uh, but uh, for the lovers of democracy, it's a, it's definitely a good news. Joining me is the Major General Retired Sashi Asthana, uh, India's uh, foremost uh, international military specialist and analyst, uh, who has authored several publications, and his voice is most sought, uh, sought after internationally on strategic matters. <laughs> So, General Asthana, um, uh, what are your first views on uh, the verdict in tai Taiwan? Uh, the verdict of people of Taiwan uh, was expected one. It was not surprising, but certainly it's not a good news for uh, Xi Jinping and People's Republic of China because they had hyped and did everything possible uh, to make sure that uh, the ruling party, DPP, that is the party of President Tsai that does not win. Uh, and But that was not to happen because Taiwan wanted a party which stands for democracy. Uh, as far as uh, the uh, immediate act, uh, implications are concerned, my opinion is that Taiwan immediately will not do anything to declare outright independence. The status quo will prevail. The party will consolidate. But certainly, the Xi Jinping's dream or China's dream of peaceful reunification will not happen under DPP. Now, that is quite certain. The kind of majority which DPP has got, it means that the people of Taiwan has endorsed this decision. The other two parties, although they were also for democracy, but they were inclined more towards, uh, shall I say, acceptability of China to some extent. And uh, they were also looking at uh, in a manner that uh, perhaps uh, they were more accommodative of the PRC. And that is why what China did was that they were doing firepower display, they were doing total coercion to give a sense to the people that if you choose DPP, you may find that People's Republic of China will have no choice but to use force. Now, this was an overstatement because there have been analysis. I have also done some analysis. There is an analysis done by a, a general of PLA, uh, which was published in South China Morning Post, that using force for reunification does not make strategic and economic sense for China. And therefore, uh, the rhetoric which was played up, China will find it difficult to absorb or swallow it for the simple reason because they will find it very difficult to use force. And at the same time, uh, the peaceful reunification is absolutely out as far as DPP is in power. Did, um... Uh, the incoming president is uh, William Lai uh, uh, Shing, and he was vice president in the previous government. Uh, uh, before going, coming to the wider issues, uh, uh, a few words, uh, General Sthana, about uh, the people's uh, love for democracy in Taiwan, because they voted very overwhelmingly. The voting was very transparent. The campaigning was very intense. And even the ballots were quite transparent. The people could see who they were voting for. And uh, it's a, a very, uh, um, very uh, inspiring that Taiwan has a fixed uh, tenure for a president's office just for eight years. And uh, the country just uh, has a very uh, short span of democracies uh, since 1996. It had a long history of dictatorship. So uh, uh, since uh, Hong Kong has a very bad memory for after coming uh, into mainland China where freedom has been curbed substantially. So how do you um, rate uh, the people's choice for democracy in Taiwan? The people of Taiwan, I must compliment them. They are brave people. They are the people who have withstood the coercion of China. They are also the people who make uh, no, uh, shall I say, hesitation in saying uh, that they want democracy. Uh, the uh, recent surveys 
had conducted that most of the people wanted democracy even if it amounts to confrontation. Uh, there was a small segment or, uh, which says that confrontation is not the path and that I think uh, many of uh, the people in, uh, in Taiwan, they feel uh, that status quo is a better option uh, instead of uh, getting into confrontation with Taiwan. Even DPP also says that we don't want China as enemy, but they also want uh, that they should not interfere in their internal affairs and uh, they should be a trading partner. In any case, China is the largest trading partner of Taiwan. And Taiwanese investment, in fact, Taiwan is one of the uh, rare countries which has trade surplus with China. So, uh, therefore, the interdependence of Taiwan on China and vice versa is quite a bit. Similarly, uh, both sides, it is 97%, uh, 96% Han Chinese. So, it's the same brethren. Uh, there are marriages both sides. There are investments both sides. There are relatives both sides. So, both come from the same stock. But then Taiwan is established as a very important uh, and very stable democracy. Uh, there was a convention of uh, states in 1933. As per that, uh, that defines as to what can be called as a country. Taiwan fulfills most of the conditions of being called as a country. Like uh, a country should have a permanent population, permanent territory, defiable territory. It should have a capability to uh, get into negotiations. It should have a population. Now, Taiwan population is more than the seven, more than 75% of the countries in the world. Taiwan's territory is more than two-third of the countries in the world. So, considering that, there is no way uh, that Taiwan should not aspire for an independent state. But between USA and China, there were few red lines which were drawn long back. The red lines are, as far as China is concerned, Taiwan should not declare formal independence and it should not go nuclear. As far as USA is concerned, China should not change the status quo by force. These are the three red lines. None of these red lines have been crossed. In fact, when a uh, lot of media was quite hyper when Nancy Pelosi landed up and I was being asked as to what will happen next, I said nothing because none of the red lines has been crossed. So therefore, there is no question of uh, 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 use of force or, or, or a war on that. Similarly, even now, uh, if you would have seen that after, despite so much of far power display and so many air violations by China, not a single soldier of China has landed up in any of the islands of Taiwan. There is one island of Taiwan which is just next to China and much farther than Taiwan. But there also not a single soldier of China landed up. So Chinese have been conscious that we will not cross that red line. So they have not crossed, actually crossed that red line. So both sides are quite sensitive of it. Both sides know the implications of uh, reuniting by force. The only problem now will be Xi Jinping's loss of face because he has been saying that, okay, it is part of the constitution, uh, reunification will happen, whether uh, I am for peaceful reunification, but uh, use of force is also not uh, totally uh, out of the window. Uh, but then the fact is uh, that peaceful, with DPP, peaceful reunification is not possible. And uh, use of force, the choice of use of force is far too costly for, for China. So now they will have to lump it and wait uh, for uh, either some trigger of some kind happening uh, for a bigger action or uh, they will have to just continue with it, uh, with the status quo. Definitely. Uh, in fact, uh, for the last couple of months, uh, China is seen to be uh, trying very hard to manage uh, uh, relations with Europe and uh, the US. Uh, they Both the US and China are now having uh, military negotiations also, which had been uh, suspended in the past in the wake of uh, the visit of Nancy Pelosi to Taipei. Now they are talking, even the communist leaders had held talks uh, with the American uh, military leadership. And uh, Xi Jinping, when he was in uh, uh, San Francisco, he told, uh, as per the American media reports, uh, that uh, China doesn't want to use force uh, for Taiwanese uh, reunification. So uh, um, uh, it appears that uh, China's economy isn't in, in a position to afford any kind of uh, muscular or pressure tactics uh, with Taiwan. 
I totally agree with you because firstly, the economy is not doing well. Secondly, even to revive that economy, Xi Jinping knows that he needs American, he needs American market. He also needs European market. Now, without these two markets, the Chinese economy cannot revive itself, even if he wants to revive. And he cannot jeopardize the economic, uh, shall I say, well-being of China for one simple reason. See, in uh, the Chinese Communist Party is ruling PRC, uh, which is second largest population in the world. And it is a reasonably developed population and it is reasonably well-educated population. And it is most widely traveled population. So this population knows the benefits of uh, democracy as well. But they continue to follow the lines of CCP and without much of protest, only for one simple reason, because CCP was delivering economically and their lifestyle is improving. Now, this is something because of which uh, CCP remains in power. If the economy doesn't, well, uh, doesn't do well, then uh, their existence uh, and their hold over the people, that gets shaken. So therefore, China cannot afford uh, not to do well in economy. And therefore, uh, there anything, any disruption uh, of major disruption can, can be suicidal for CCP. So that is why uh, and uh, use of force by uh, China on Taiwan uh, has a major risk. And that risk, I don't think uh, the Chinese economy is in a position to take it as of now. Um, sir, China is seen in the neighborhood as a bully. Uh, with all the neighboring countries, it has uh, troublesome relations. Now the people of Taiwan uh, have given a very definite uh, sort of message. So what is your interpretation and what are the messages for the neighboring countries in South China Sea and even India? Because India also is having trouble on the border with China. See, China has a strategy, uh, firstly, to win war without uh, fighting. And secondly, uh, there is co something called, as which I have written very extensively on, is incremental encroachment strategy. Uh, this means that you keep pushing your neighbor uh, for grabbing more uh, of uh, their land or their maritime space uh, till the time uh, it is a situation where the other guy confronts you to fight. When somebody confronts you to fight, then you stop because you don't want to fight. But you want to gain as much as you can by coercion as well as by incremental encroachment. Now, this is something which they have been doing all over. Uh, similarly, all their fishing tra trawlers getting into uh, maritime space of other countries and pushing uh, their uh, naval uh, vessels uh, is, is part of this strategy. Now, they will continue to follow this strategy. They will also continue to follow this uh, uh, strategy of coercion on Taiwan as well. But now Taiwanese message uh, people have given a very strong message that they can withstand it. You also asked a question regarding Hong Kong uh, or a little comparison regarding Hong Kong. See what CCP could do in Hong Kong. That is not possible in Taiwan for two reasons. One is Hong Kong did not had its own armed forces. Taiwan has owned armed forces. Uh, Hong Kong did not have a pact or some kind of, uh, shall I say, understanding uh, with the United States, uh, which Taiwan has uh, in terms of Taiwan Relation Act, then Taiwan Travel Act, and then National Defense Authorization Act. Then uh, Taiwan has modern arsenal of USA. Uh, in fact, uh, out of the NATO countries, I think Taiwan has some of the modern aircrafts, which nobody else has. Uh, out uh, which uh, USA has given uh, not to anybody else. So therefore, it's not a cakewalk. Then the other problem is when we do war gaming, uh, if uh, People's Republic of China has to attack Taiwan, they have to use the maritime space all around. Now, all around maritime space means that they have to use the maritime space of <coughs> Japan also. And that is where the Japan will get involved. And that is where USA reluctantly will get involved. And you would have seen even during elections, uh, USA has placed one aircraft carrier in that area. And uh, USA has made a lot of bases uh, with Philippines in recent past. And all these, some of these bases are very close to Taiwan, military bases. So therefore, the message is quite strong. 
that the cost of uh, use of force on Taiwan is is pretty high and certainly much more high, much higher than Hong Kong. And in Hong Kong, uh, maybe uh, there was only uh, a CEO or the uh, administration was uh, different, but most of the things otherwise were being controlled by China. Uh, the uh, military was stationed in Hong Kong. In case of Taiwan, there is nothing like that. So therefore, these two are two different cases. It's not all that easy as, as it happened in Hong Kong. Now, on the economic front, um, uh, General Sthana, because uh, Taiwan is the powerhouse of chip uh, manufacturing, and uh, it is also a technology-led company economy. And we have seen India and Taiwan cooperating more in the recent years. Uh, and Taiwan is also exploring a China Plus option to relocate its uh, investments out of China. So uh, how do you foresee India and Taiwan relations stepping up uh, in the next few years? With DPP in power, I certainly see a very bright future of India-Taiwan relationship. And uh, I also see a little bit of extension uh, and much more engagement uh, as far as economic engagement is concerned, technological engagement is concerned, and chips manufacturing is concerned. So we certainly, uh, as of now, I am given to understand that uh, the uh, uh, chips uh, manufacturing giant uh, is still working out with with India. Uh, the the deal is not totally off, but uh, it's presently on hold. But then the fact is uh, that uh, Taiwan has been looking to diversify because they know that China's the investment in China can be uh, a part of uh, Chinese coercion, and they are under threat of coercion. So therefore, they would like to diversify, and if they have to diversify, then uh, a big market like India is an attractive option. Also, uh, in terms of uh, the labor cost, that is increasing in China. One of the major things which was, favor in, uh, which was in favor of China uh, for Taiwan to make all the investments in China was uh, the cheap labor because uh, the labor cost is one-fifth of uh, Taiwan. And in now, even if you compare the labor cost between China and India, India is a much cheaper option. So considering all this, I see a very bright future uh, of cooperation between Taiwan and India in times to come with DPP in power. Lastly, uh, General Astana, I would like to draw your attention to uh, the, in, the Indo-Pacific uh, uh, geostrategic play. Uh, Quad cooperation is going on. India is part of that. Uh, uh, what kind of uh, Indian participation do you see in the Indo-Pacific? And uh, do you think that... Uh, the distractions of Ukraine and Israel will not affect American participation or interest in the Indo-Pacific. See, uh, the uh, U.S. engagement in Ukraine as well as in Middle East, uh, they have certainly uh, affected their capacity to influence things in Indo-Pacific. Uh, so therefore, uh, there is no doubt that uh, and this is a part of a little faulty policy as far as I am concerned in a manner that Cold War 1.0 with Russia was supposed to have ended uh, after Second World War and after breakaway of uh, USSR uh, but uh, perhaps the Biden administration continued with it and that's what we are seeing the results and in addition to that the Cold War 2.0 between USA and China has started and this is a bigger Cold War and uh, even USA realizes that China is a bigger threat than all other threats put together. So therefore, uh, there is no doubt uh, that this is a problem area. Now, as far as Quad is concerned, Quad is addressing all non-kinetic threats from China, not the kinetic threat. It's not a military alliance so far. But what is uh, positive about it is that in addition to Quad, we are having uh, parallel Malabar exercises also. Now, that is a military content in a manner that the interoperability is improving. So, if you have interoperability, if you have uh, military assets in that region, which there which there are, and if uh, those military as, uh, uh, assets uh, can work in synergy, then the intentions can change overnight. Now, this is the message which uh, China gets. And that's why they uh, keep talking that Quad is a clique against us or things like that. Although Quad has never mentioned uh, China and they have never mentioned uh, as uh, it as a military alliance, nor they have mentioned any threat to China. But certainly, Quad is looking at 
uh, <laughs> one of the challenge which caught this looking at is uh, the rule based order now who is disturbing the rule based order in indo pacific is china so china can assume that they are the threat uh, but then the fact is uh, that uh, they shouldn't be uh, i mean they know what they are doing uh, so rule based order freedom of navigation and uh, shall i say uh, the respectability to for global commons and maritime space uh, is important and that is important for all the quad countries and other countries in the world so i am sure it's not going to be only quad it is going to be quad plus there are many western countries also interested in indo pacific indo pacific is going to be the center of uh, gravity as far as economic activities are concerned and uh, uh, apparently as far as development Uh, economic activities and everything uh, i think the whole uh, attention of the world is shifting towards uh, to indo pacific and it's also the most populated region so therefore uh, uh, i i visualize uh, that quad will go strength to strength but it will certainly not remain a military alliance uh, uh, to to but it will address all the non kinetic threat like the supply chain problem Uh, the independent uh, technological chain the independent health chain the independent infrastructure development uh, independent of china so that i think is the area uh, these are the areas where quad is looking at and did uh, the people of china taiwan have given a resounding verdict and they have rejected uh, uh, the kind of threats uh, uh, posed by china and general stana has shared very insightful uh, a perspective about uh, tai taiwan and china relations as well as besides uh, he has also given uh, the possible uh, consequences and the ramifications in the world affairs so, thank you so much sir for talking to us have a good night thank you thank you